Welcome back to our Photoshop tutorial course. In this part, we're going to design the main content area for here. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do, though, is make some alterations to the design we did last week. Uh, I've changed my mind on some of the aspects of the design. First thing is to lighten up the top bar. So first thing is lower the opacity of the inner shadow because I think it's a bit too severe. Next thing is to fill this bar in with a different color, D7. Make sure you have that layer selected when you do that. Do the same thing for the bar down here. Same color. Then lower the opacity of the bottom border slightly and the inner shadow change to completely white. Next thing, this bar here, reverse the gradient. It just gives a slightly better effect in my in my eyes. Uh, one last thing, change the text so it's slightly lighter. That way the logo sticks out slightly more. And save that. We're now go on to some of the new things, which is going to be the rounded cornered content area here with some slight shadow effects on each side. Before we do that, however, let's try adding an admin link to the top right. So let's type admin, change the font size to 12. And let's change that to none. Again, add a drop shadow, one pixel lighter. When you're adding a drop shadow, try and make it blend more normal and a solid color, 100%. I didn't do this on all the text before, but it just helps later on when you're coding. Next, rounded rectangle tool. Make a button. Put this layer below the text we just created. And position that kind of properly. So for the button, we want it to have an inset look. So we go, first of all, fill opacity 0%, set this to black on the color overlay, and darken 15%. Next, add an inner glow, except change again to darken black, lower the opacity slightly, then finally add a one pixel stroke, which is lighter. To me, the text, the drop shadow looks slightly too severe, so let's go back into that. I'll do it. Okay, and save. Next we'll go on to the main content. So first thing you need to do is select the render rectangle tool. Let's let's try fix position. Sorry, fix size. Um let's try height of four hundred. I think we only need it slightly bigger than that. Say five hundred. Let's position that. To help us position it, we can always show the guides we created before. You can see it's within the guides. Move that down slightly. <clears throat> and let's go into layer style blending options. Remove fill opacity. 
and make it color white. Next thing we want to do is add a drop shadow to the side, on either side that is. So to do that, make minus 94, and let's change the opacity down to about 22%. That's got on the left side, if I remove the guides you should be able to see that. It's got a slight shadow going down the left side. So we'll select again, duplicate, go into layer style. This time change the drop shadow to minus 86 degrees. There we have it on either side. Next thing to do, new layer. So This is a new layer, drag it on top. And if you hold control and click on here, you should get the outline of the shape while you're still on the new layer. If you hold alt, you drag, that eliminates that section. Do the same again, just this, just to highlight the width of the template, new layer, sorry. Go back, no need to add a new layer, we just did that. Fill this rectangle in with white. Control and T to transform and drag it down so it covers the whole height of the template. So this is our main content here, what it's going to look like. Only slight problem is these shadows are very severe, how they tail off. So to fade these, what we'll do is rectangle tool, outline tool that is, select the area where the shadows supposed to tail off, new layer, fill this in with any color, go into layer style, binding options, gradient overlay, set both colors equal to the background. And then zero opacity on the top top color. That therefore the the color is fading from solid here to 100% opaque, opaque. That way it looks like the shadow is fading away. You can reposition that slightly and. And then duplicate the layer and add it to the other side. Therefore, we have a nice little effect. Next thing, select the background. Select the area here before the shadow starts to tail off. New layer. Fill this in with anything. Blending options, fill opacity zero, and then another gradient overlay. See how this is overlapping slightly? We need to reposition this so it only comes in before the shadow starts to tail off. Change the white equal to the background. Reverse so the black is on the top and set to set to normal. Lower the pass A to C 10% and then reposition it down one pixel. So you've got a little, little darkening from the top. And that's pretty much what we're going to be set with for the content. Next thing, just add a, add a little text here to see which, home, which page you're on. So Sure, this is on the top. Uh, 
and change the change the color so it's not quite so bright. If the text here was pure white, it would distract us from the rest of the template and disrupt the flow of the, the website. So if we blend it in slightly by making it a gray color, it doesn't distract your eyes so much. Reposition that however you want. Maybe move the rounded corners area down a little bit. And that's a set. Next thing I'll do in the next tutorial is go over the feature data here and possibly some of the elements in the main content. But here we have our basic shell of a template. We also add some color next as the template is currently purely black and white. Thanks for watching and again you can get instructions on the website and you can get downloads with all the Photoshop files as well on the same page. Thank you.